Hello and welcome to another X-Ray Tech video. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create loops in Zapier. Using loops will let you perform the same action several times for each item in a data set. A loop will let you do things like send an email to every address in a list or update your inventory database for each line item in a receipt. If you'd like more automation tutorials and deep dives like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now let's get to it. First, you'll need to have a trigger step to grab some data to work with. Our trigger watches an Airtable base for new records, and we've made sure to include some arrays and lists that we can build a loop with. To add a loop to your Zap, just add a new step and search for Looping by Zapier. Under the Events menu, you'll see three options. You can create a loop from line items, from numbers, or from text. Each of these options works in largely the same way, but I'll take you through each one individually. To create a loop from line items, you need to have a piece of data that's already subdivided into several components. In other words, your data will have to be formatted like an array. In our trigger, we're grabbing each new entry to this Airtable base, which contains some linked record fields. In Airtable, a linked record field with multiple entries is treated as an array, so this will be perfect for our example. We'll enter one of the linked fields, fruit names, into the second field under values to loop. In the first field, enter a label that you want to use for this data. We'll call it, no surprise, fruit name. Next, choose whether or not you want to trim white space. This defaults to true, and you usually want to leave it as is. In the loop iteration counter field, you can pick where the loop will start counting. If you set this to one, then the first iteration of your loop will be called number one. If you set this to two, then the first iteration of your loop will be called number two, and so on. Note that setting this number to two won't skip the first item in your array. It will just label the first iteration as number two. You'll usually want to leave this as number one, but there can be instances where setting it to another number might be useful. Finally, we have this option for maximum number of loop iterations. Setting a maximum will make sure that your automation will stop running, even if you've accidentally created an infinite loop, and will stop it from consuming too many tasks in your Zapier plan. Ideally, you should set this number to be the same size as the data set you're looping through. If you're using an app like Airtable, you can add a field that counts how many records are in your linked field and use that number as your limit. Otherwise, you can simply estimate and set this number to be a bit higher than the expected number of items inside of your array or list. Next, test the loop. If you see multiple loop iterations like this, loop iteration one, loop iteration two, three, or four, then your loop worked as expected. Any actions you add after this step will be performed once for each item in the loop. In our example, we'll add a step to send a Slack message. This message will show us the iterator number, then the name of each item being processed in each loop. We'll get one Slack message for each item in the array, we should see four messages when the automation runs. However, when we test this step, we only see one message. When you click on the test button, Zapier will only run the loop once. If you want to see how the whole thing will run, you'll need to turn the Zap on and trigger it. We'll do that by adding a new record to our Airtable base. And we can see four Slack messages appear. When you're structuring your zaps that use loops, just bear in mind that any actions you add after the loop step will be a part of the loop. If there's anything that you want the automation to perform once, make sure it happens before the loop step or add a filter that will only be fulfilled after a certain number of runs in the loop iterator. Now, let's take a quick look at the other options for creating a loop, text and numbers. Creating a loop from text is very similar to creating a loop from line items, but it lets you work with any list that's formatted as a piece of text. Your data doesn't have to be in an array. You just need to have items separated consistently, like with a comma or a semicolon. 
Enter that character into the text delimiter field and fill in all the other fields the same as before. Test the loop and you should see each item separated into its own loop iteration. Performing actions with this loop will work exactly the same as performing actions with the line item loop. Now let's look at creating a loop with numbers. This is a bit different from using text or line items. Instead of always looping through every item in a dataset, a numbers loop will simply run as many times as you specify. With a numbers loop, you have precise control over how the loop runs. You can choose the iteration number that it starts and ends at, and how much the iteration number increases with each run. For instance, you could have your iterator start at two, go up by three each time, up to a limit of 11. We'll set up our loop with those numbers, then edit our Slack message, so it will just tell us the current iterator number. We'll turn on the zap, and add a new record to Airtable to trigger it. And we see four messages in Slack, two, five, eight, and it stops at 11. And that's all there is to it. Setting up a loop in Zapier is pretty simple, and it can be a great way to process lists and arrays and turn them into useful, time-saving automations. If you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for more automation tips every week. If you'd like to learn more about no-code and low-code automation, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can check all those links in the description down below, and as always, don't forget, keep the flow.